The Clean Water Act of 1972, presented by Maxine Aguilar. Water, the basis of life, something we rely on every day. 25 years ago, only one-third of the nation's water was safe for fishing and swimming. Agricultural runoff resulted in the erosion of 2.25 billion tons of soil and the deposit of large amounts of phosphorus and nitrogen into many waters. In addition to this, water treatment plants only served 8 million people. In democratic society, we expect government to advocate clean water for its citizens. Clean drinking water is not only a basic right, but also our responsibility to help keep water clean. It is the government's responsibility to create and enforce laws that regulate water pollution produced by companies and municipalities. The Clean Water Act was created to better control water pollution in the United States. The act was passed on October 18, 1972, when Congress overrode President Nixon's vetoed bill. He felt the act was too expensive and would cost corporations to make costly adjustments to their businesses. Unlike its predecessor, the Federal Water Pollution Act of 1948, the Clean Water Act was specified deadlines that gave regulators permission to impose interim goals to reduce additional water pollution by 1985. It ensures surface waters meet better safety standards for human recreation by 1983, and it restores and maintains the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of our nation's waters. The Act divides pollution into three areas for purposes of regulation. Point source pollution, non-point source pollution, and fill material. Point source pollution is created by any discernible, confined, and discrete conveyance, such as a pipe poking out from a factory or sewage treatment facility emitting waste. Such pollution is said under the Act to come from a discharge. Agricultural runoff is an example of non-point pollution which comes from a diffuse source. Construction sites, parking lots, and other areas are sources of diffuse pollution affect the Chicago River. Point source solutions are controlled under the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES. One must have a NPDES permit to discharge from a point source, and it is a federal crime to discharge from a point source without an NPDES permit. Non-point sources, however, are basically unregulated by the Clean Water Act. The third type of pollution under the Clean Water Act is filling. Placing materials in a wetland or other water of the United States for the purpose of creating dry land. Section 404 of the Act requires a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to fill. The Clean Water Act was prominently based on the Federal Water Pollution Control Amendment of 1972, which was an expansion of the Federal Water Pollution Control Act of 1948. The law was most notably been amended again in 1977 and 1981, but the 1972 amendments still make up the bulk of the framework commonly known today as the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act heavily influenced the creation of other bills in 1986, President Reagan vetoed the Water Quality Bill, claiming it was too expensive and, quote, loaded with waste and larded with pork. Republicans were as critical as Democrats of the President's veto. I believe President Reagan has listened to the wrong advice, said Representative Arlen Strangeland of Minnesota, a Republican who helped shape the bill. This body needs to send a strong message to the President and the American people that this Congress won't tolerate delays in cleaning up America's waters. The Chicago River is haunted by a legacy of pollution. In the city of Chicago's early days, it was common practice to dump sewage and garbage directly into the water, creating dreadful conditions. Chemicals and toxins also polluted Lake Michigan. As dioxin began killing trout in the region from time periods as early as the 1930s, an agricultural runoff released substantial amounts of phosphorus into the lake during the 1960s. In fact, in the 1920s, the Chicago River had 10 species that resided in its waters. Currently, over 70 species reside in Chicago River water and over 60 species of birds and other animals. Advocates for the historic Chicago River were pleased when the Clean Water Act was enacted. The Chicago River's quality was so poor, however, officials didn't believe anyone would want to ever swim or fish in it. 
So initial standards were set very low, soon after the passage of the Act. Over time, however, improvements like the installation of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District applied different projects like the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan that began in 1985. Although improvements are visible, other challenges persist. Disinfection procedures don't keep the rivers free of untreated sewer water. Like almost 800 other cities, Chicago employs an old sewer system, collecting rainwater runoff, domestic sewage, and industrial rainwater through the same pipe. The Metropolitan Water Reclamation District plants treat that water and then dump it into local waterways. But when it rains or snows a lot, like this season, the treatment plants overflow and the excess sewage in the combined sewer overflows goes straight into the river, which means even all the disinfected water going into the plant, there's still some disgusting material traveling into the river, and into Lake Michigan, which pose a threat to both waterways. The Clean Water Act was greatly improved conditions of the Chicago River and Lake Michigan's overall ecological health, but also implemented Illinois water improvement programs like the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. The Illinois General Assembly was the first state legislature in the nation to adopt a comprehensive environmental protection act. It was signed into law by Governor Richard Ogilvie and became effective on July 1, 1970. As a part of the act, the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency was created. The mission of the EPA is to safeguard environmental quality, consistent with the social and economic needs of the state, so as to protect health, welfare, property, and the quality of life. On October 23, 1977, the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency became responsible for the implementation of NPDES permits to Illinois communities and industries. This authority allows the state to grant industries and municipalities the opportunity to work directly with the IEPA on wastewater construction and discharge permits. Before, the state dischargers were required to comply with both the state and the US EPA. The IEPA is the principal body that implements the Clean Water Act in Illinois and responsible for preparing most of the key reports relating to Illinois water quality. Four additional agencies also play key roles. The Illinois Pollution Control Board sets water quality standards and regulates permits, monitoring, and enforcement. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources provides hydrological and biological expertise, but serves an advisory role in the regulatory process. Until recently, recommendations on standards were generally ignored. Regulation of septic wastewater systems are governed by the Illinois Department of Public Health or the IDPH. Bill Holman, director of the state policy at Duke University's Nicholas Institute for Environmental Policy Solutions. It's one of the most successful environmental laws ever enacted, he tells MNN. The country has made huge strides in reducing pollution from wastewater treatment plants and industries, and it has even helped spark redevelopment of many areas because waterfront property is valuable again. People like being close to clean water. According to EcoWatch.com, clean water is especially vital to the economy in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, fishing, hunting, and wildlife watching generated $36.8 billion per year in those states in 2011. Unfortunately, the conservation group American Rivers named the Chicago River one of the most endangered rivers in the country. On May 11, 2011, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency ordered the state regulators to impose stricter water quality standards on the river, or else the agency would step in and do it. And on May 3, 2011, environmental groups filed a lawsuit charging the wastewater agency regularly violates the Federal Clean Water Act. When the Clean Water Act was passed in 1972, less than one-third of the U.S. waterways met quality standards. Today, more than two-thirds meet standards. We've come a long way since 1972, but we still have a ways to go to ensure not only that our nation's water quality continues to improve, but also that we don't slip backwards. We're up all night to get